Hello guys and welcome to the Source Engine Lighting Tutorial. We are going to be tackling this scene here. Um, we're going to be using the Porto Portugal scene that I imported a while ago, which is a daytime scene. And we're basically going to be grabbing that and just doing a brand new lighting pass on it and we're going to be turning into into a nighttime scene uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of things here we're even going to be adding well rather tweaking materials we're going to be adding lights spotlights we are going to be messing around with fog a little bit too we're going to be working on this, the 3d skybox that you see here we're going to be polishing the fog for that skybox too. We're gonna to be painting a few stars. We're gonna be adding some reflections to the areas that didn't exist before. We're gonna be doing a bunch of things from beginning to end. A lot of custom work here. A lot of custom lights. I'm gonna be using a lot of prefabs too. We're gonna to be um, using some parallax materials on these windows there with some emissives. So yeah, I hope you guys like it and um, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we got the the original scene here. We are going to be, instead of starting some from scratch, we are going to be opening one of the stock maps. But let's look at some reference first, just so we have a little bit of an idea where we're going with. And... Um, like I said, we're going to be opening one of the stock maps. Let's start with a C-17 tanker. Um, rather, water tower V map. Never be afraid to do this, by the way. Never be afraid to open and reverse engineer the Half-Life Alex stock maps. There's a lot to be learned here. So we're going to be looking for um, the light environment entity double click on it open the prefab and copy some of these values control tab to go back to our original map and we can we just need to select these fields here and control c go back to our map control v if you want to reset these parameters parameters to default just highlight them, right click, and reset to default. Copy the sky color. The intensity. We got a one. And let's see here. No, it's gonna bring it up to one. Just reset all of this. Yeah. Let's see. No ambient occlusion is being used on this night map. You probably do not want ambient occlusion turned on for a for a night map. Just doesn't make any sense, of course, because there's no predominant direct lighting, such as the sun. Even though we do have the moon, which is what we're copying here, of course, but it's obviously not as strong, so there's no need for AO at all. Get rid of the volumetric fogging. We do not need that. Not for the sun, of course. We are going to be using a lot of volumetric fogging, but um, for the lights and spotlights. Okay. Looking good. I think we copied all the values. And uh, before I forget, let's save as and copy map to its own map Porto night 01 I like to add 01 
in front of my textures and my maps, just in case I need to add a 02, 03, 04 later. All right, let's go back to Valve stock map. Let's see what, what they got going on here on the Env sky. The Env sky, you basically load um, the texture of the sky. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, hang on, let me just close all here, just so tidy up that, that list. I noticed that, that there's a bug. You can't just close one. Or rather you can, but um, control tabbing will crash the editor. So I just closed all of them and bring up our map and bring up the C17 water tower map. And let's look for the entities again. Here they are. Okay. So let's, let's resume what we were doing. M sky. What is our M sky right here? Let's just paste the tank a yard. Let's just double click on the sky material. Material editor opens up and let's just look for, yeah, this is it. We're gonna be making our own, but for now, we're just gonna be loading this this guy here. Copy the tint color, fog type. And what else do we have here? Start disabled needs to be off but um, that doesn't really matter because we're gonna have one on our um, 3D skybox. So first things first, let's see here. So our M volumetric fog controller here. Um, where do I have one? I have one in here on my map. Let me, let's turn on the material. And okay, this is mine. So I guess I can just delete it and copy it and sorry, paste it paste the uh, valves one here and there's, there's a bunch of red parameters there we could just delete that later that's just legacy stuff because uh, valve developed this engine alongside this game so there's actually a lot of legacy stuff on some other entities so if you do copy them into your own maps just um, I mean you can either ignore it or ignore it or um, just delete them so let's see cube map fog here just reset to default and Looking good, looking good. So the fog controller seems to be looking good too. Let's save our map. Let's see what we got going on in the post process here. Where is their post process? Uh, let's use the outliner to look for it. Here it is. Okay, so we can just copy this. It seems like they're using the base post, post process one on this map. So uh, we're gonna be creating our own later, but I guess we could just paste that too. Yeah, let's clean that and let's see. Let's browse for the post processing. Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, it seems like there's two, but they're both the same. Okay, just just to make sure. Control C and Control V the name. That also works. You don't need to browse. Remember to save often. Um, this editor seems to be pretty stable, but does crash every now and again. So it's always a good, <laughs> good habit to have, of course. All right, looking good. What else we have here? M sky we did. M volumetric fog we already copied. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, we can just get rid of these guys. This is legacy stuff. Like this shit is not used anymore. Let's just make sure all the values are in sync. Again, the tab to go back and forth is Control Tab. The uh, the hotkey, I mean. So let's see here. I'm gonna be opening my 3D skybox for my original map. Nighttime, uh, sorry, daytime, of course, as you can see, and we're gonna be turning it to nighttime. So file, save has, and you obviously want the same name as your default map, just add 3D skybox to the front of it. It doesn't really matter why, what you call it, you just need to make to make sure that it's, um, it's correctly referenced. Ah, here you go, I'm gonna have to close all again. Just because of that bug, um, if I do manually close one and I use the control tab, hotkey it does crash the editor which is really weird so uh, I'm gonna I need to open sorry close all of them and reopen my maps again just get rid of that plant there 
uh, okay okay so this is where you link your 3d skybox map this is a skybox reference entity and it needs to be placed in a zero 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 world coordinates there you go I know the fog looks really weird but we're gonna fix that later all right we're looking good here we're making good progress um, let's jump on the Porto night 3d skybox map and let's get rid of these entities these are the old entities and let's copy both the M sky and the light environment and let's paste it exactly in the same spot and if you ever do a uh, tweak these entities on the on the uh, on the main map do not forget to uh, update the 3d skybox um, they are not linked so you need to make sure they do use the default um, not the default the uh, the same values you are using on your map all right so let's see what we got here it's looking the fog is looking pretty weird but we'll again we'll fix that later um, yeah, I guess I can have start disabled off and in this guy. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So now, now we are seeing the uh, texture that we want to. So it's exactly the same texture as used on the valves map. So I guess I can get rid of this glow here. Just big material. We're, we're, we're going to bring those back eventually. So this is the light importance volume that I have around the map. You need to make sure this volume encompasses all of your gameplay area. This is really important. So um, VRAD knows where to uh, uh, put more res resolution on the maps, on the um, on the texels. So you need to make sure this is your in your gameplay area only. All right, so there's a bunch of lights in here from the original map that we do not need at all. There's a bunch of simulated bounce lights that I placed uh, that we do not need. Get rid of that. And a bunch of fog lights that I also manually placed that we not need. We're gonna need our own later, but uh, these don't work, obviously. Um, a bunch of Omni lights in here. And uh, let's see if there's more spotlights. Outli uh, Outliner is really handy, by the way. It just filters out the air selections. So we're gonna be using spotlight. Sorry, the outliner here to look for more spotlights. Looks like it's pretty clean. So this is the uh, the probe volume, just so we have the uh, correct um, probes and reflections, so we can bake it and this is what it looks like baked it's looking pretty good so now we have lighting in our um 3d skybox map the uh, i know the fog still looks weird but we're getting close we're getting close see so if we do bake one just one asset here and uh, give it a second See, it's already dark. So even though everything is bright in the map, it's bright because it hasn't been baked. So if I just bake one asset, you see we're already getting the correct lighting. So if we go here on all lighting and look for, what are we looking at here? 3D indirect light. There's a bunch of really, really handy um, values in here that, that you can go back and forth and debug your map with. F5 is the flat and uh, F6 is all lighting. Uh, so I do go back and forth between F5 and F6 a lot. Um, right. Go back. If you, if you press that little orange Q with a T, you basically hide all of the editor materials. So that's good to know. And Shift O. Um, you hide all entities all right so let's grab this spotlight here again I always like to start with shit that already exists um, I never really like to start from scratch because um, if already spent if someone either me or some other artists already spent time polishing and tweaking some of these values why start from scratch you know our time is valuable so let's select this particle this spotlight and this fog entity 
so let's select all these three guys paste it in here and put it right beneath our lamp here shift W turns off snapping but if you do not want to turn off snapping you can just press control and smoothly move your entity bring up our references up again to remind us what we're trying to do here let's see the brightness is pretty crazy uh, 6 6 should be pretty bright but let's increase the outer cone a little bit it seems like it's pretty narrow um, 65 seems like a good value this is our fog volume it's pretty narrow I should probably probably scale that a little bit by pressing Q and grab these little handles here and just um, increase the box so as you can see if you look carefully the fog um, exists inside this box basically and you can tweak the fog strength fog strength and the a bunch of other parameters in there so this is our um, little moth mosquitoes particle always looks cool on uh, night times to put this beneath the lights it adds some movement to the scene too which is always kind of nice uh, the stock game has a bunch of particles in there if you want to like um, beautify your map uh, particles is always a good idea let's see what else they have here yeah see they did use the um, spotlight the particle and the fog volume right beneath it and this one seems like it has a brightness of 10 10 does sound like really bright though but uh let's see let me paste it here and see how it looks hmm see that's a six let's try an eight yeah probably too bright but um let's see just stick with the 10 here comparing the values of oh, the fog contribution strength here it's really strong if you set it to one it's pretty strong just need to go back and forth and uh, obviously the map is not baked so uh, shouldn't need to spend too too long tweaking these values I'm gonna be turning this guy into a prefab later anyway cast shadows I'm gonna set that to yes it's pretty expensive but it's the predominant light of the scene so uh, it is worth it so um, non light map assets also cast shadows let's increase the saturation by it by a lot like looking at our reference it's pretty orange so let's yeah look look at that let's just go crazy with the orange we can always turn it back later I really like to exaggerate my saturation values and even my intensity values uh, I like to crank shit up to 11 that's one of my one things that I love doing and then if it looks crazy I turn it back a little so we should probably fix this fog it's kind of irritating me a bit that it doesn't look good um, let's reset to hmm see here yeah the fog and distance looks kind of crazy the fog start looks good it's 200 units fog starts at 200 units and 10,000 15 50 yeah 50 seems to be much better you see the houses in the background there and uh, you also see the bridge pretty well yeah kind of like that it's not annoying me anymore all right so let's see here where were we all right skybox map here 3d skybox map here i need to get rid of these clouds later they look really good on the um on the nighttime map sorry on the daytime map but on the nighttime they're pretty bright i could create a uh, new material for them but um, I guess I prefer it without it for the night version anyway let's keep 
keep polishing the fog again I really like to push that saturation just to start in the beginning um, never be shy about using color um, it's one of my mantras usually and again just use that trick you know if you never if you never know how much is too much just crank it up man you know just crank it up and then um, you know in the next day or something if you get feedback or if this feels weird uh, you can always re reduce it a little bit all right we're getting close the scene is needing a bake soon so let's just do a bake and see how it looks All right, so we just need to wait and we can skip forward and it's looking pretty good. Obviously, it looks really dark and abandoned, but uh, we're going to take care of that. Seems like some of these decals are also kind of glowy. Whenever I bake, I like to fly around the map like this, see how things are doing, see how the light is doing. Again, those clouds are really annoying me, but we can fix that later. I am really liking the spotlight. This is looking pretty pretty damn good. Um, the brightness isn't killing me. I think the brightness is kind of nice. Let's bring our references again. Yeah, look how look how strong the spotlight is. We're gonna need to to make that spotlight pretty strong. And. Um, Hmm. Seems like it wants to be inside, but obviously you can have it inside because it's gonna cast shadows on itself. You don't want that. So let me increase the light source radius, maybe. Let's see here. Let's tweak the values on the on, on these guys so it looks a little bit a little bit wider. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, there you go. Like these guys on a predominantly dark environment they do light up the area around them and we on we want these guys to be the predominant source of lighting around the map so it's okay if they're a bit bright so let's hand place a omni light or you can just grab one it seems like they did not use an omni light in the spotlight around the map so I wonder if we can grab one here like I said I just like to grab stuff that already exists so we have one here oh that's a prefab so you need to double click that now you have access to it there you go hmm yeah kind of like that so it seems like they do turn uh, uh, shadows to baked only of course and it's looking pretty good so I'm just rather just creating a new one copy that there you go copy the same orange value of the spotlight to the omni light I'm using a spotlight because the omni light is obviously not lighting the area around the lamp so I do want the area around the lamp to, to be lit not as much as the bottom so this is a prefab I made a prefab from my original map so we're obviously gonna have to uh, let's see turn shadows off yeah so if you turn shadows off you can put lights inside it yeah I like that Hmm, this we're gonna need to come up with a bright material for the glass there. That glass looked pretty good on the daytime version, but that's not gonna cut it for the, for the nighttime. I like to hide and unhide stuff a lot like, like this. I'm basically doing H U H for hide, U for unhide. By by doing that, I can alternate and see what the uh, entity is doing. Mm, yeah, just turn off shadows on this. And shadows be gone. Wait. There you go. Yeah. 
Yeah, no shadows. Much better. So this guy does, doesn't get shadows on, on itself, so it doesn't create any weird long, long shadows like that. And I can place the light omni inside it. Like that. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, I like to turn stuff on to uh, sorry, rather to hide and unhide stuff so I can see what it's doing. It's way too big. It's five twelve right now. Probably gonna have to to reduce that eventually. Uh, you really do not want lights to be intersecting with one another, not too many of them anyway, otherwise it starts getting really expensive. So you want to have them as closed, uh, sorry, as, as uh, small as they can be. 512 is pretty crazy, but it's going to get turned into a prefab, so we can always tweak that later. Pretty good. taking my time here because this is pretty important that we nail this guy uh, whoops there you go shadow so if, you thought if I turn shadow on this guy just for hmm let's see here whoops yeah so let me copy that and paste and paste it in here. Yeah. Uh, shadows on oh, this guy. On again and boom, boom, boom. Select all of this. And like I said, we're going to be creating a prefab out of that. So I just want to make sure that it occupies the same space as my previous pre prefab because I don't want to change the prefab that already exists in my daytime version. I was forgetting about that. Uh, I need to be careful with that because um, if I do change, that's the concept of a pre prefab, right? If you change it, uh, it's going to propagate to all your other instances. So, um, <laughs> so I basically just got rid of the old prefab and um, made sure that... Um, creating a new one I really like these particles this part these particles are really badass I'm a fan of, of effects unfortunately in VR you cannot have too many effects because they're really intensive and um, they add a lot of overdraw to the uh, to the scenes so right click and what is it uh, selected meshes creates new prep new prefabs from selection there you go so this is a list of the other prefabs that i already had from my other map from a daytime map so i want the same name but with night in front of it and there you go so this is now just one prefab one group prefab it's not a group it's a prefab but uh, source engine 2 does have groups as well all right so mm, this material is not gonna cut it it's definitely not gonna, gonna cut it this lamp was modeled in the engine though, by the way, so I can just um, make sure I look for a material that I can already look. I mean, I could make a one from scratch, but if I can use stuff that already exists, man, and uh, save me some time, why not, right? So let's just look for light and quickly browse the materials that already exist in here. Let's see. Yeah, I see a few ones here. I wonder how this would look like. Oh, that, that one looks good. Yeah, I think this can work. Let's see here. So press 3, select all the faces, and then shift T to apply the active material. So, um, there you go. Pressing 3 for face. Control A selects all of them. Control G opens the facts, the fast texturing tool, which is basically source tools uh, UV editor it's not the best UV editor in the world I can see them working on this and making it look much and making it feel much better but it does get the job done 
so it does remember so three select the face control G and then enter and notice when you press control G it does save the same coordinates as is your previous one so it's really fast for you to go around and apply apply the same mapping there you go yeah I think that material works I mean it's not perfect should probably make a new one but I mean it's okay for now it's okay for the uh, to save us some time maybe yeah maybe I do that let me increase the grid a little bit yeah I think I like that better yeah I think I like that better so let me select the, the other ones three to select the, the face control G to open the fast texturing tool and then enter so you can just control G enter control G enter control G enter applies exactly the same mapping coordinates to the faces that you have selected again it remembers them which is really handy you can just map stuff really really fast all right looking good here man I really like these effects like like I said, I'm a fan of effects. I wonder if I can find like a uh, a glow, like I don't know, like a foggy kind of effect. Um, just curious if they have anything here. Every now and again, I just like to browse the stuff that that they have in here. Um, no, I'm not seeing. Oh, light glow. Let's see what this looks like. That's mm, that's not bad it's white though that's not gonna work and you cannot tint effects like you can tint um, geometry or materials you will need to create an effect from scratch which I definitely do not want, want to do for the sake of this tutorial I mean I guess we could but uh, I mean I guess we can also do the glow effect with post process later instead so but let's see let's see how this looks like anyway shift o to hide all the entities yeah yeah that's not gonna work that's not gonna work that's fine we can just do it with post process later all right so shift drag to create a duplicate of our prefab and let's start placing this sucker around the map here man so angles i'm gonna copy the one from the guy that i had in there and there you go again control we uh, control turns off snapping or rather you override snapping there you go ah oh, look at that that looks awesome whoa look at those crazy shadows we might need to take a look at that later uh, I don't know I don't hate it hmm f5 um, you get into this full bright mode by the way Again, I already said this once, but I do alternate between F5 and F6 a lot. So let's see, what do I have? Another lamp here. There you go. Whoa, that looks weird. Huh. Never noticed that. Anyway, focus. Focus. Let's do these lamps here. Let's reset the rotation to default. There you go. Put this sucker exactly where the other one is. Hide it. Delete the other one. Unhide it. There you go. Boom. Look at that. Those shadows are looking beautiful, man. Like, this is going to look even better when we make this ground really shiny. It's going to react to the lighting. I love how the, how the normal maps of that stone wall are reacting to the, uh, to the spotlight, too. Right. And there's another one here. So I might move it to this building just so it stays a little bit farther away and I know I'm being a bit reckless with our lights in here um, I think if this was a shipping game <laughs> we could not have them so close together unless I move them to the other side yeah that might be better I really do not want my spotlights to intersect All right, let's move my reflection light probe this entity does both, by the way. It does your light probes and your reflections. The light probe basically shades your non-light mapped uh, assets, like props, for instance. 
and your reflection is pretty self-explanatory. Everything inside that probe um, will reflect what that probe catches. Anyway. Looking good here. Uh, I really like how the fog reacts there. Yeah, this is awesome, man. Get in there, get in there. All right, back to Fulbright F5. And uh, let me copy this sucker and put it in there. Okay. I do like to have my snapping angle to 45 degrees, by the way. Um, you can always reduce that, but um, 45 is cool. Hmm, where do I place this guy? I wonder if I move it. In the original, I had it in there, but I do wonder if I move it. Let's see here. Yeah. Hmm. So I know this, there's no gameplay in this map, but usually I love using um, lighting for navigation something that I it's a trick that I have used in the past a lot um, I mean it's pretty well known that people follow the light which is you know it can be argued people have argued that that before uh, in the past but something that people definitely follow is uh, angles so if you have some very strategic shadows creating some angles they can simulate um, arrows in people's minds so you can definitely have them gravitate towards uh, a certain spot in the map with um, with shadows and lighting. So let's open our 3D skybox here. And like I said, these guys are annoying me. They're full bright and ugly. I should probably do something about it. Alt, control Alt O doesn't select all because it is a hammer geometry. These are not props. So I can just, I'm gonna have to select them manually. And actually, you know what? Let me try and tint them blue. Does it, is that gonna work? Let's see that. No, yeah. I mean, it does darken. And uh, this is a um, Half-Life Alex material. So I do not have access to the material. I could tweak the, the material. So I, we can tweak the alpha and the color so we can make them I mean this might be salvageable salvageable if you make it really dark no it seems like it has three layers of um, um, yeah yeah as uh, at least two layers growing and it seems like one of the layers is not being tinted by the color on the parameters tab here so no matter how how much you re reduce the alpha and darken the color, I don't think this is gonna work. But let's see here. Hmm. You know what? It's not too bad, but I don't know. I think it kind of like makes the scene look a bit foggy but the scene is foggy i guess we can leave it for now okay so let's grab this lamp and again i love using lights for navigation so this is per perfect here yeah see like when you're right here and you see that light in there you automatically your eyes automatically gravitate there like you you spot players curiosity like oh shit like what is that seems like that is that there's an alley down there i wonder if i hmm i wonder if i move the light angle like right now i'm using exactly the same angle as my daytime uh as my daytime scene but i don't need to i mean although i kind of like it I really like how these four main buildings did like like these buildings are like my they're like the POI of my scene. I do like how they're being lit by the moonlight there. And um so I probably just leave them in. 
All right, shift, right click in any face in the map. You should open the material. This is a window material I did. So obviously we're gonna want all of these windows to have glow, so we can just right click on them, same as, and um, add underscore night in front of the material. And there you go, we already have a new night variant of the material. So we're gonna need to look for the emissive. There you go, material one emissive level, and there's another one which is material two emissive level, because this is a parallax shader. So, wait. Oh, it doesn't seem like I'm using the parallax on this one. So uh, we're gonna have to stick with the material one. Even though I am using the parallax, um, you don't really see it on this variant. It's okay. It's not really for a, for a shipping game. If it was, do never be lazy. I mean, if you're using the parallax, make sure you are using the parallax. It's a little bit more of an expensive shader, but it's okay. So let's see here. So there's another window here. It seems like it's facade 04. So we can just open it and go to prefabs and facade 04. Open that and this is basic this is a prefab. Prefabs are basically map a map within a map. And oh shit, I opened the wrong one. I opened the dark frame 04. My bad. Let's see here. Yeah, facade 04. There you go, that's the window. Okay, so. Okay, so. Ba -ba 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 -ba, what am I looking here? Well, now I screwed up. I have a bunch of guys. Anyway, save as, and we're obviously gonna want this to be a night version, just, to, just like we did to that material. I'm gonna be saving as. Let's browse for that material that we just created. Type night, there you go. Boom, and then three, select all faces, and shift three to assign the material that you currently have selected on the active material down there. And this is window one. This is another material, by the way, which does need a night version. Window on night, save as, scroll down. And this guy seems like it does have a material tool on the parallax, so we're definitely gonna need to pump up that emissive level there. There you go. That that's way too bright, but we'll we'll definitely tweak that. Uh, I don't think I tweaked the displacement of these textures very well when I worked on this. Uh, but um it's not the end of the world. Yeah. This basically simulates parallax. It simulates having a little interior on the other on the other side of the windows. It's just basically it's a very simple parallax, two layer parallax. That allows you to have your curtains and um, interior behind. They can sort of like peek inside. All right, so assign the new material, select the faces, and um, shift again. Shift T assigns the material that you have selected to your faces. And then um, shift O to select all of the instances. And boom. See, this is the power of prefabs. You change one, you change them all. Obviously, this is crazy as fuck. Like, this is way too bright. Let's just tim this shit down. There you go. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm. hmm. It's really pale. I should probably make a texture for it. I would hate have to um, be creating new textures for this tutorial, but it might it might be justifiable to just hop hop in Photoshop and create a new one. Anyway, let me just try and tweak the emissive a little bit for now. Thirty. Thirty should be too crazy, but yeah. Hmm. Ten. See what it looks like? Yeah. Better. It kind of looks a bit full, full bright, but we can, uh, we can grab a new texture for that later. Select a prefab and select all instances of the prefab. By pressing Shift O. Is it Shift O? If we 
get. I think it's Alt Shift O. It's a lot of hotkeys on on uh, Source Two, as you probably already know by now. Um, a lot of them are worth memorizing. And uh, as you work with this ed editor, um, you're gonna memorize them anyway. They're gonna become mu muscle memory, so you're gonna be using them so much. Like Shift T, for instance, you're gonna be using a lot to apply to apply materials to selected faces. So let's see here. I'm trying to make up my mind what I'm gonna be doing with these prefabs here because I do want to leave some of these windows off i do not think i wanna i want every single uh window in this map to be turned on i think it's something to be said about uh, leaving some of these off whoa this material is way too bright oh yeah it's the original one we did it's zero one f okay so let's just scroll down and reduce the emissive to two better not perfect but mm -hmm. I think it would be kind of cool if this building has like um, whitish and bluish kind of lights on the inside, almost like kitchen light. And all the others are like yellowy, more warm. Should probably go for that. Let's see. Let's see what what that looks like. Right, let's see here. It's looking good. I'm liking how this is looking. Not perfect, but we can always tweak things later. I really love to. I'm sure you noticed that by now. And if not, you will. I like to work on stuff and then abandon it and come back to it later. Or maybe I never do, you know, um, and that's fine. But uh, we usually want things feel wrong. So that little skin option here, by, by, by the way, allows you to open to uh, scroll through uh, different books that some uh, props have. Really handy. So if, if you are, uh, using a Half-Life Alex prop, do make sure that uh, it, ha it doesn't have a skin. If it does, um, just scroll through it. You might, you might, you might like it. It adds variety to your map. All right, let's see here. I wonder if we can add an actual interior instead of a parallax to use this window and add an interior to it. I mean, it already has an interior, so I wonder what it looks like to have a light on. I am trying the alpha here, but it doesn't seem like it's looking very good. Yeah, we might need to bring that up to 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 five three. Let's see, 240. Yeah, that's really weird. I don't think this is gonna work. Yeah, not with the light behind it because this is a straight up opacity. that light yeah I really want to try and push and do like an actual interior I think it will really help the scene um, I really like this parallax material but you know sometimes they do look kind of fake and that, that's why I made these windows in the first place and I actually put these drapes in there these curtains in there sorry as 3d because it does break up the re repetition of all of these windows because these old Portuguese um, buildings, they do have a lot of windows and they do tend to look kind of samey and kind of squarish. So um, doing this kind of stuff does make it, um, does add some variety. Okay, so I'm probably, there you go. I really don't like how Light Omni have the same 3D icon as the spotlight, but if you do look at its name on and the class on the object properties or on the outliner, you'll see that it, it is a light omni and not a spotlight. Um, I do hope that, that that's something that they do fix later, later on. And if you are watching this in the future um, and that is fixed even better, um, because um, I do predict that um, Valve is definitely definitely gonna keep working on this um, editor and keep making it better. I really like this editor. I think it's definitely one of the most um, 
powerful additives that I've ever worked with. Um, I, w I would like a shader editor. As far as I know, that doesn't exist. I did not, not have time to explore that yet. But uh, but the default shaders that do come with the game are really cool. This is looking good, man. Like this is coming together. I think we came at a good stopping point there. Yeah. I'm just basically using two Omnis, one inside to kind of like light up this, this in interior, fake interior, and another one to sort of like simulate, sort of simulate subsurface scattering. And I know this looks expensive to be using lights like this, but look, if you make them small enough, yeah, if the range is like 50 or less even and if you turn off shadows it's not expensive at all all right let me let me turn on the glow on this guy notice how i just pressed three selected all of the faces shift three boom like this workflow could not be faster it's a really really awesome workflow and i love how you can just alter geometry inside the editor and just really quickly assign another material to it if you want to yep that's cool and uh, if a lot of this stuff about applying materials and um, modeling inside the editor looks a bit confusing to you right now, uh, you, ca you can always refer to the uh, intro to um, Source Engine 2 tutorial, where we, we're gonna be covering that pretty in depth. And uh, it's actually simpler than it looks like I'm liking where this is going. I'm probably masturbating this stuff a little bit too too much now, but I do want to make sure I nail this because I this these guys need to look good because it's um, in a way. I mean, I want to call it the POI, but it's, people will definitely look at this. All right, so let's copy this guy here. I should probably turn this into into a group or even a prefab, but uh, I guess I'm lazy. There you go. That looks good. For now, I think that's fine, man. There you go. It's flashing, by the way, because it's not, it's not baked. It's just overdrawing. And that's what happens when you have too many lights intersecting with uh, each other, by the way. Uh, the engine doesn't know what to do with them. Uh, because this is a forward rendering engine, it's not deferred. Like you would never get that into the uh, in a deferred lighting engines. Deferred lighting just eats up. Deferred rendering rather just eats up as many lights as, as you want. Um, definitely not not this. But all the lights that we are using here are gonna be bake only. So just the previous that you've seen them in the editor here are real time. So. That's why they are flickering. They're not gonna be like that one day when you run them in game. So I wonder if we had some glow to these doors. Kinda like that. Hmm, yeah. And notice how fast I just did that. I just like selected the, the, the window, press three to go into face mode, double click to, to select all of the faces and shift T to apply that active material that I have right now, which is basically the night version of the window. All right, let's keep working on these windows. Let's open this one. So it seems like it's window facade 10. There you go. Let's save as, save this prefab as window facade 10 and night. Save that. Obviously you wanna apply the um, night version to this window that's the whole point of creating a new prefab so go into the active material select night three on the keyboard double click select all the faces and again shift t and there you go select all prefabs of the same kind and browse to the new prefab that we just created boom notice how fast this workflow is i really love this this is really awesome and uh, that's the power of prefabs man like you just you make one and that's it it just propagates through everything else uh, i'm a fan of prefabs they're really powerful all right so like i said i do not these windows to look blue um 
uh, we're gonna have to create a warm version of these windows so let's see I wish I had a tint in here I do not think you can do that with a tint so yeah I'm gonna have to create a new texture yep oh well a man's gotta do what a man does let's do it let's open Win which one is it window one yeah <laughs> we're doing it live folks not really there you go and um, let me get rid of that grid control H let's see here uh, color which one is it color 2B let's duplicate that, that layer and call it color 2B night go and hide that so what are we looking for we want to create a warm version of this guy right so I do have a US saturation layer in here that I can probably just tweak to get the desire look that I want and I do have this control layer here for the edges of the window there you go that looks good man look at that you can like get like a hot outline around it Okay. Oh, that's way too saturated. But like I said before, and I'll say it again, I do like to crank shit up. And um, yeah, if it if it's too much, we can always go back to it. I do love to use color. Uh, I think people are way too shy, as usual, to to use color. And um, even though this is a night version, I think there's still ways to um, to make this this guy pop. I do use Ex Expresso Exporter to ex um, export my TGAs. By the way, you should look into this um, plugin. See, so you can just create a new one. I name it the same thing as my layer, and you just load the RPG and then click export and your TGA already exists in the same folder as, as your PST file so I can just go in here and browse and yeah there you go night boom loaded and well now I screwed up because it's loaded on that guy to the right but that's fine for now I can fix that for sure it's a bit too pinky Let's keep tweaking these guys up until we like the result. Yeah, making it less reddish and more, more of a yellowy orange here. And tweak these values a bit. Kind of flat, but we can add some gradients later. 075 is way too glowy you can always make a post process later to make these guys kind of like bloom a little bit i always love love to do that so even though it's kind of flat right now you can always tweak it later keep tweaking these textures yeah it's getting there kind of like it's growing on me kind of reddish but Let's try and increase the emissive just a little bit. Like I said, it's kind of reddish. I don't like how reddish it is. Maybe that outline can stay reddish, but yeah. Let's see. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. See, I do like it more yellowy, like like that. Just looks more um, just more natural. I think. Yeah, when okay. it's too red, it just doesn't look. It just doesn't look plausible. Like I don't think ethereal lights look like that. So this, this is getting close to it. Kind of like that. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to turn those guys into blue. I do not want orange lights on these buildings. Mm -hmm. 
let's see here. Sorry, I'm thinking. So this guy is orange, right? So I can just open this guy and yeah, I'm gonna have to duplicate it. So 